Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where it's a very beautiful early spring day here at Hinokicho Park. Uh, my voice might sound a little bit rough and you might hear me sneeze a little bit from time to time. I think I'm suffering from the uh, springtime allergies which are rather common here in Japan this time of year. Uh, a lot of people have said that, uh, uh, that Japanese people are really good at wearing masks because they are, uh, they'd like to be polite and stuff if they're feeling sick or whatever. But the main reason Japanese people wear masks is because of the pollen here, even in the Tokyo area. It can be pretty miserable. Uh, luckily this year I'm not as affected as I am at other years, but uh, uh, it's, it's getting me pretty good today. Uh, the, the park here is very beautiful. Uh, everything is starting to turn green around the pond. I'm sitting here in my favorite spot to make videos here at Hinokicho Park. Uh, the, the leaves are starting to have uh, leave. I guess trees have the leaves budding in them and pretty soon instead of being in the sunshine like I am today I'll be sitting in the shade. Uh, the cherry blossoms are very beautiful today. Uh, they're of course past their prime. We're getting toward the, the end of the, <clears throat> what we call the Hanami season here in Japan. Uh, this will be the last week where we get to enjoy the cherry blossoms. There won't be so many of them left by the weekend. There will be some uh, out. And of course the parks will of course be crowded uh, with the last minute people coming to enjoy the cherry blossoms before they all fall out. Uh, we had quite a lot yesterday but then it rained last night and a lot of them got washed out of the trees. But as you can see it's still quite beautiful here. And a very wonderful day to come out to the park. So let's go ahead and get started with the subject of today's video. And today's video is going to be about another Petri camera. In this case, it's going to be the Petri ES Auto with the electronic shutter. Of course, they only came with the electronic shutter, but uh, they put that on the front here just uh, so everyone would notice that this was an electronically controlled camera. In the early to mid 70s, the 40 millimeter focal length was very popular. In photography, it was uh, it offered you more field of view than the standard 50 millimeter lens. Uh, Petri says that the 40 millimeter lens gives you a 27 point something percent improved field of view over the 50 millimeter lens, though not quite as wide as the 35 millimeter lens. Now this allows this, this 40 millimeter focal length allows you to. Uh, uh, get good images without compressing the perspective too much. It doesn't distort as much as a 35mm or wider lens, but it offers more in the field of view than a 50mm lens. So a large number of cameras uh, and lenses for uh, other uh, cameras were manufactured in the 40mm focal length. Of course, in the fixed lens rangefinder cameras, besides the uh, ES Auto, we have cameras like the Yashica GX and GL. Uh, we have the uh, Minolta Hymatic E, which is the most uh, the camera closest in design to the Petri ES Auto, uh, not to mention the Canon, uh, I guess, uh, QL series, the QL 1917 and uh, what 28 cameras, which featured a 40 millimeter focal length. And then there were some SLR cameras, like the Olympus OM system uh, introduced a 40 millimeter f/2 lens, which is rather hard to find and very expensive nowadays. But um, yeah, this was uh, the ES Auto was uh, Petri's attempt to carve out a small part of this niche market for themselves. So let's go ahead and take a look at the features, controls, and functions of the uh, ES Auto. And first, it's a compact camera. And as I said, it's similar in design to or the Minolta Hymatic E. It doesn't offer any manual control. Uh, cameras like, say, the uh, Canonet QL17 offer full uh, manual control as well as shutter priority automatic uh, and cameras like the Yashica GX or GL offer aperture priority automatic operation whereas cameras like the Minolta and Petri in this th this camera offer only fully automatic but it's a quite good system and it works really well uh, starting at the top of the camera here we have the film rewind knob which folds out like so to uh, rewind the film we have a shoe for mounting a flash gun and one thing was a, a marketing I guess uh, point of the ES Auto was its ability to operate a flash somewhat automatically. And if you used a, uh, say, a Petri flash gun, flash gun or other type of flash, uh, you could get automatic, I guess, flash control with the camera more or less. Uh, we have an indicator light here indicating that the uh, uh, camera is working. And through the viewfinder, there's kind of a two-part light in there, and um, uh, if you have the, the amber light go on, it means the shutter speed is going at 1 30th of a second or slower. Uh, if it's not, if that light isn't on, then you're in, within the normal operating range. If you attach a flash to the camera, the shutter slows down to 1 20th of a second. So this camera has a rather slow uh, flash sync speed. 
Uh, moving over to the right here, we have the shutter release button with a standard cable release. And it has a locking button, which is located around the side. And we have a film counter window here. On the back, we have the viewfinder window, and uh, this camera has a nice and large bright viewfinder. Uh, it doesn't have parallax correction uh, like the Yashica GX or GL, but then uh, uh, cameras like the Hymatic E and some other cameras don't have it either. There are uh, parallax guidelines in the viewfinder which you can use. And as I said, there are LEDs inside the viewfinder to let you know when you are getting down to the, the slower shutter speeds. Uh, here we have a switch on the back, and it switches between A and F. When you're operating the camera normally, you would switch it so the A setting is shown. And uh, this will allow the camera to work in the normal automatic mode and allow the flash to work automatically. If you switch it to the F mode, that is for the manual flash mode. And every time you fire the camera in this mode, it will fire the flash. Whereas here, if you have it in the A setting, it will only fire the flash if the flash is necessary. So kind of an interesting feature uh, that this camera has and which I, I don't see in a lot of other rangefinder cameras of this era. Uh, in, the, in those days, in the early 70s, uh, flash uh, technology was advancing and to have a camera with an advanced flash system was a, I guess, very advanced technological feature. Uh, here we have the uh, shutter charging and film winding knob. I don't have batteries in this camera, so it's, I'm not going to be able to demonstrate the sound of the shutter for you, but uh, it's kind of similar to uh, other cameras at the time. Uh, things which are my certain Hymatic cameras, Minolta cameras have a similar system on them. On the front here we have the viewfinder window and here we have a combination window for the rangefinder as well as the frame lines. Uh, this camera has projected frame lines uh, like uh, some of the other higher quality cameras. Projected frame lines offer like a, a better, I guess more, a, a better view of the frame lines when you're trying to compose and focus compared to uh, I forget the, what they call the the other system. Some uh, I'll have to look it up. But the, what was pioneered by like Zeiss Icon back in the 1930s or so, where you have the the frame lines kind of etched in the the glass of the viewfinder in the back. Uh, the projected one, the projected system worked much better and gave you a a much better system. And also, uh, for cameras which had parallax correction, it, it made it. Uh, uh, more effective. Uh, the, the far, you could move the frame lines or the mask in front of the frame lines and still get a very bright frame line image. Uh, we have a little kind of atom sign here and it's kind of a copy of the Yashica camera. Uh, the Yashica camera was very popular in the early 70s. The Electro 35, the GS, GL, GX or whatever you want to call you know whichever model it happened to be. And that was the camera which uh, Petri was most trying to compete against when it was selling the ES Auto. And perhaps you went to a, uh, an electronic store in those days and wanted to buy, say, a Yashica GL or GX, and they were out of stock. Uh, they could offer you a camera like this, and it was kind of the closest thing to it. Uh, on the bottom here, we have a self-timer lever. This is a mechanical self-timer, which is uh, which works quite well and more reliable than the self-timers which come on the cameras where the self-timer is actually built into the lens assembly. And uh, th by this, I mean specifically the Yashica Electro 35s, the full-size ones. Uh, this one was, uh, place where Petri outdid Yashica was with a better self-timer system. Uh, here we have a focusing ring, and this is knurled rubber all the way around. It's very different from other uh, rangefinder cameras where it's usually a metal ring or with a focusing tab with the knurled metal all the way around. This offers you a, a more superior grip than other cameras at the time. This is very like the, the kind of grip which you find on the Olympus OM uh, interchangeable lens SLR cameras. Uh, I like the way it feels. Uh, it's more comfortable than the other systems. We have a focusing scale set up on the back here, which is arranged in both feet and meters. As this is a 40 millimeter lens, it has a shorter uh, focusing range or focusing throw, I guess. The range isn't shorter, just the, the amount of uh, that you have to turn the lens is shorter. As the focal lengths get longer, you have to turn the lens more to focus between infinity and close focus, uh, if the lens focuses very closely, that is. As the lens gets wider and wider, the depth of field gets compressed and you don't have to turn the lens so much. So a good point to a camera like this with the 40 millimeter lens is that you can focus it more quickly than uh, the lenses on uh, cameras which have a more standard 50 millimeter type of lens. In front of this, we have a ring here which looks like an aperture ring because we have aperture numbers on one side and we have these green numbers on the other. But this is actually a guide number scale which you would use when uh, using the flash. 
So uh, the Minolta flash and other flashes usually feature a guide number system and <clears throat> depending on the way that the, of course this camera reverts to a 1 20th of a second uh, shutter speed when you're using a flash, uh, you would use these numbers uh, to, I guess, uh, set the I guess the intensity of the flash depending on the range or whatever you would just use the instructions which come with your camera or excuse me with your flash behind that we have the ring where we adjust the film speed setting there's a tab here on the bottom which you can use to turn the dial and we have a range of film speeds from ASA 25 to 800 which covers pretty much all the film which we have available uh, on the market today uh, it's a little bit hard to find anything faster than 1600 uh, speed film on you know, in uh, 2022. Uh, of course, there, I, I don't imagine they'll discontinue the production of 35 millimeter film anytime soon, probably without, within our lifetimes. But uh, the options that we used to have available, uh, the different kinds of uh, films like uh, the different types of black and white films, uh, infrared film and such, as well as films like 1600, 3200, or 6400 ISO films. Uh, those are probably long gone. But we can always count on getting uh, films anywhere from, say, uh, ISO 50 to, uh, say, ISO 400, which is suitable for, I guess, 90% of photography. Uh, going to the bottom of the camera here, we have the release button for uh, releasing the winding mechanism so you can rewind the film. We have the battery chamber here, and one of the drawbacks of this camera is it's designed to use the old uh, HM style mercury batteries, but you can easily use this camera with LR44 batteries. Uh, you can do that in two different ways. You can either stick two of them together in series on one side and just use a spacer made of tin foil or uh, a ball bearing or something like that on the other side, or you can put one battery on either side uh, following the polarity. There is a sticker in the back here showing you which way the battery should point. And then you can use a small nut or make uh, you know, a bubblegum foil wrap spacers between the batteries and the contacts in the camera. Uh, fortunately for cameras like this with this style battery, it's very easy to make spacers yourself out of stuff you can find around your own house. The Ashika Electro 35s, the big ones, those are a little bit more tricky to make an adapter for those batteries, but for these it's quite easy. Uh, this is this pretty much the identical battery cover that you find on the Yashica GX. And over here we have a cutout in the bottom uh, cover where, which makes it easier to load the film. Uh, there's a film uh, door here. The latch is located on the side here and you pull it downward. I was pushing it upward. We have to pull it downward to open the film door. And you can see the cutout here. You just put in your film canister through the bottom so it, it, it lines up with the forks on the rewind uh, on the rewind knob. You stretch your film across and feed it into the take-up slot and then you'll need to wind the uh, uh, shutter and wind the film and charge the shutter and depress the shutter button to wind through uh, each frame until the holes on the film are lined up with the teeth on the take-up sprocket. I can't do that because I don't have batteries in this camera. Uh, then you close the door and simply wind and fire until the number one shows up here and the camera is ready to go. So. This is a nice camera. Uh, these are very well made, uh, easily on par with the other cameras like say the Minolta Hi Matic 9 and the Yashica GL. Uh, the, the performance of this lens is quite exceptional. This is a six element lens, very good design and superior to some of the lenses which Yet Petra used in their earlier cameras, which had uh, cemented elements and the elements would sometimes suffer from separation. I, I haven't seen an ES Auto which has suffered uh, from this problem, but by the 1970s they had kind of perfected the art of uh, gluing lens elements together using better optical cements than the Canadian balsam which they used to use in the earlier ones and that's the, the stuff that kind of uh, gives us, us trouble in things like planar lenses and uh, let's say the uh, and lenses which we find in some of the TLR cameras uh, planars and such uh, but uh, for this camera very durable uh, very very I've, I've never actually seen one of these which has separation unlike the earlier 45 millimeter f1.7 petri lenses uh, the viewfinder is really nice the auto exposure system is really good and this gives you automatic exposure down to two seconds the shutter will last as long as two seconds so if you're in a fairly dark place or shooting indoors as long as you hold the camera you're more likely going to be able to get an exposure with this camera so pretty good uh, for all around use for a beginning photographer, this camera is quite simple because all you really have to do is just switch it to the A mode, focus, wind, and you know, compose and shoot. 
You don't have to adjust the aperture or shutter speed settings. The camera does everything automatically. Uh, for those who like to play around with flash, this camera was designed with a, a flash use in mind, so it's good for you guys who like to use a flash. So, anyway, that's it for my review about the Petri ES Auto Camera. As I've said in recent videos, I'm uh, uh, making more videos about more and more cameras. I, I keep getting more and more of these every week, and I plan to do videos about all of them. So if you'd like to see these, uh, please subscribe. As I've also said in previous videos, I'm trying to grow this channel, get more people interested in vintage cameras and film photography in general, or excuse me, in general, in general, or in, in gentle general. Uh, if you like uh, the video, uh, please like it. Click the like button. That will draw more people here. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.